Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Family Worship on this wonderful first Sunday of the month of December, 2021. And that means we don't have too many days left in this year. So whatever we need to wrap up, whatever we need to sort of make plans for the brand new year coming up in a month, we should get ready for. Well, today is kind of a special day to Wahana Christian Center. December 5th, 1997, and that was like exactly 24 years ago, our church started. We opened our doors for worships and ministries 24 years ago. And ever since, God has been blessing us with all the worship gatherings and ministries. So. And it has been our tradition every first Sunday of December, instead of having a celebration party for ourselves, we give gifts to our neighbors. So this year, marking the 24th anniversary of our church, uh, we have prepared 24 Christmas gift sets to 24 seniors living alone. So everything you see in that photo, a uh, good antique style, table clock, Christmas word search, you know that's good for like old people, helping them memorize words and other memories, and hand sanitizer, and just in case they need it, a nice LED flashlight. So that will be the gifts that we'll be sending out to 24 seniors living alone and this was made possible by your donations and offerings throughout the year so thank you very much for partaking in this ministry and let us celebrate not so in grand party way but in our sincere worship unto god that he has been faithful to us the last 24 years let us open our hearts give our thanks worship unto god guests, disciples, and other important people of the town came. So it was really busy. Question. Which one of the sisters chose to listen to Jesus' teachings instead of doing the busy chore? Which one was listening to Jesus' teaching instead of getting all busy with food and everything else in the house? Remember we talked about this? Was it number one, Mary? Or was it number two, Martha? Of course, the answer is number one, Mary. You know, it's not that it's not important to 
greet your guests with good food and all the preparations. It's about priority. What is more important? And Mary chose wisely to listen to Jesus' teaching because that was the most important thing. Make us think about what kind of priorities we need to make as we make plans for the new year that's coming up in a month, right? It's all about priorities. reflection time, meditation, and prayer. How can we become rich and still go to heaven? Think about that. Let us take a moment to pray.
About the time that Abraham lived, there was a man named Job. He was a good person who was kind to others. Job also respected God and desired to obey Him rather than sin. Job had seven sons and three daughters and loved each one of them very much. Job was a very rich person. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, and 500 donkeys. These animals helped him farm his land and trade his goods for other goods from faraway lands. Job's children enjoyed spending time together, so they would get together often to celebrate special days, like birthdays. Their celebrations involved big feasts and a good time together. Job wanted his children to honor God with their lives, so he would make a sacrifice to God the morning after the feasts, just in case one of his children had sinned. Job didn't want any sin to come between his children and God. One day, while the angels were presenting themselves to God, Satan came too. God asked Satan, Where have you been? Satan answered, well, Traveling the earth back and forth. God said, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a man who treats others kindly, respects me, and hates evil. Does Job fear you for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not kept bad things from happening to him, his family, and all his goods? You have blessed his hard work by allowing him to increase his possessions. Why wouldn't he obey you? But now, take away what he has and see how he reacts. I think he will curse you to your face. Then God said, Okay, Satan, all that he has, I will let you take from him. Only do not touch his body. Then Satan left to trouble Job. Later, a messenger came running up to Job and said, The Sabaeans stole your oxen and donkeys and killed your servants. I'm the only one who escaped. Then another servant came to Job and said, Lightning struck your sheep and the servants watching them, and I'm the only one who survived. Then yet another servant ran up and said, Three raiding parties of Chaldeans stole your camels and killed your servants, and I'm the only one who escaped. Still another servant hurried up to Job and said, A strong wind struck the house where your sons and daughters were feasting, killing them all. I'm the only one who survived. Then Job stood up, tore his robe, shaved his head, fell to the ground, and worshipped God. He said, I didn't have anything when I came into this world, and I can't take anything with me when I die. The Lord gave me a lot, and the Lord has taken it away. But God is still good and right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job did not sin by blaming God for losing nearly all he had. So once again, this is the challenging question given upon us today because Jesus said it's going to be really tough for a rich person to go to heaven. Matter of fact, he said it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. So you know, we're kind of troubled by that because I mean, honestly, we want to be rich. I mean, we want to be rich for good reasons. Not only we want to make sure that we have a comfortable life, but we want to have enough money to help other people and do a lot of other good things. But to be rich and be able to go to heaven, we have to learn from this great example of Job. Because he has shown us how to be rich and how to be good at the same time. Well, it's about characteristics, it's about faith, it's about standing still and walk on the path that goes through the needle all the way to the cross that will lead us into the kingdom of God. And Job had these characteristics, good qualities, that made him able to do that. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. But this man was blameless, 
upright, he feared God, and shunned evil. That's it. The Bible gives us four clues how to be rich and still be able to go to heaven. These four things, the qualities Job had in his characteristic, we have to learn how to be just that. Blameless, upright, fear God, and shun evil. Well, I am sure you understand this is easier said than done. How can we be blameless? How can, can, can we be upright in all situations? And what does it mean to fear God? You know, so many times in the past we talked about it. it's not about having fear, phobia toward God, but it's about becoming holy as God is holy. And how to practically walk away from evil where this world is just full of evil. Well, James chapter 1 verse 4 says, it takes perseverance. Perseverance must finish us its work so that you may be mature, complete, not lacking anything. Blameless. Perseverance. You know, perseverance takes a lot of different faces and different situations. In hardships, you need to have a strong perseverance. In kind of a day-to-day, day-to-day, -day, day -day mundane life, it takes resilient perseverance. In like happy days, everything is going in your way and you're so successful, then you have to have really willful, willful perseverance that not only in the time of need, but when everything is being fulfilled, you're not forgetting God's grace. You're coming back to the same place where you kneel down and worship God and give thanksgiving unto Him. So perseverance talk, talk, uh, talks about having the same kind of deep faith in all different sort of circumstances, situations. And only when we have that perseverance of faith that we have one of those qualities walking through the needle of an uh, eye of a, of a needle that will get us into the kingdom of God. And then it's all about walking. Walking straight. There was a good king you know, in the Old Testament. There is a long list of bad kings and very short list of good kings. And Josiah was one of the good kings. And why was he good? The Bible says that Josiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. Okay, Josiah was not a biological son of David, but inherited the spiritual you know, the faithful inheritance son of King David. And he was walking straight as David was. And think about the implications of that. Think about how you can apply that into your daily walk. Walking straight. Not going to the right, not going to the left, not looking at the world, not falling into the waves and winds of the sea of the world. But Keeping focused, walking straight, taking that journey of faith. And hopefully you can translate this into your personal life. What you need to do in order to straighten your walk in this journey of Christianity. But this is something we've got to get down. This is something that everybody has to find the solutions of. How to walk straight. How to walk straight toward the cross. How to walk straight, passing by the, the eye of a needle and entering the kingdom of God. Straight walk. And then the Bible tells us about another secret of entering the kingdom of God with all the blessings in this world, and that is to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Okay, reverence is kind of a not-so-common word, 
the people using this day and age. Reverence means holy fear. It's all about fearing God in the holy way. Not because he's going to punish us, not, not because he's going to send us to hell or anything. You know, that will be kind of an emotional fear. But when the Bible is talking about reverence, it's talking about because God is so perfect, it's because God is so powerful, it's because God is so holy, we need to be imitating that too. We're not going to be perfect in our faith, but we have to try our best. We're, we're not going to be holy, meaning sinless. We always have these temptations and some dusts of sinful nature left within our hearts. And that's why we have to say the prayer of repentance every day. So we can cleanse out our spirits day by day. So by no means we're going to be perfect in our faith. But we have to imitate after Jesus Christ how he walked the holy walk. How he lived separated from evil. Day in the morning and, and daytime and when we go to sleep, we have to examine our, our daily, daily situation, what kind of atmosphere, circumstances we go through each day, and make sure we are standing on the holy line, keeping ourselves straight, not swerving to the right or left. And that's what the Bible says, do not swerve. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. It takes following the line all the way through the eye of a needle. It takes unswerving straight path. If you go to the right a little bit too much, there is evil. If you go to your left a little bit too much, there's also evil. We, that's why we have to stay in line or stay on line all the way straight. And this line that goes through the eye of a needle symbolizes the pathway of Jesus. You know, it's, it's the light of our way. It is the word of God that leads us. We have to stay on it. We have to stay in line and make sure that we take a straight walk. It takes a lot of discernment. It takes a lot of practice and training. So as we give our worship unto God and read the Bible and take time to pray, we need to equip ourselves as to how to walk straight on this holy line that will make us true, go through the eye of a needle, and lead us all the way into the gate of kingdom of God, heaven. The challenge is upon us, and this should be our prayer. Help me to stay in the line through the needle. Help me to walk the straight path all the way to the cross, all the way that we can enter the gate of kingdom of God. There will be a lot of temptations, there will be a lot of winds and waves of the world trying to knock us over. But as long as we have deep faith in Jesus Christ, we can have these strong feet on the line that will, lead us, that will lead us all the way to Jesus Christ, all the way into His kingdom, our heaven. Are you up to the challenge? As we take this moment to meditate and pray. Now, it is our wish. We want to be well off. Maybe we don't have to be the richest person in the whole world, but we want to be well off. So we can, we can live happily and help other people and do all that. And of course, we want to go to heaven. So how can we have both? all the blessings of richness entering the kingdom of God. It's all about walking in line, staying on the line of faith, 
a straight pathway. Father God, we thank you for all the blessings you poured upon us in our past. You've given us our family. You've given us our place of living. You've given us everything that is necessary to make ends meet in this world. As we foresee our future, it is our honest wish that we want to be well off. We want to have enough richness that we can live comfortably and happily and still have something left to share with our family and friends. So as long as we have that good cause of becoming rich, Lord, help us to enhance that with a deeply rooted faith in Jesus Christ. We want to become rich people not only in this world, but we want to have the richness in our faith. So we can be, be, be able to walk through the eye of a needle. And we want to follow the pathway of Jesus Christ all the way into the gates of heaven, kingdom of God. So Father, give us faith, give us passion, and give us obedience so we can walk this pathway, walk this journey faithfully as you are to us. We thank you for your message and grace. In Jesus' name we pray.